Your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Welcome back, Driven Women and those aspiring to be so. Here we are at episode 27. This is another one for the entrepreneurs among the audience. And it's all about how many things we have to learn when we make the transition from worker bee to queen bee, queen of our own hive, that is. But in addition to everything we have to learn, it turns out there's an awful lot we have to unlearn as well. But before we get into it, as promised, I will be reading you another one of my podcast reviews. This one is from Jackie McDee, who happens to be a fellow podcaster. Jackie's podcast is the 40 Thrive Podcast, and Jackie is the leader of a community for women over 40, That's 40 Thrive. She's also a creative coach and podcast launch consultant and runs the Find Your Voice Academy for podcasters. Here is Jackie McDee's review for The Driven Woman. She says, no sugar coating. If you're looking for someone to sugarcoat the truth or give you personal developments you can find anywhere, keep looking. Diane provides real-life strategies and is original, creative, and speaks from the heart openly and honestly. Thanks for all you do, Diane. Aw, thank you, Jackie McDee. That's lovely. As a matter of fact, I have been a guest on the 40 Thrive podcast more than once. So if you'd love to hear my conversations with Jackie, go check that out. One of them that I think was especially fun was uh, about starting over. I don't remember the episode number, but Jackie interviewed me in my walk-in closet shortly after we relocated from a lifetime in Los Angeles to our new home in Portland, Oregon. I know a thing or two about starting over. And I know a thing or two about learning and unlearning. So let's get to that. If you happen to be fortunate enough to be born to entrepreneurial parents or had a mentor, advisor, or role model during your early adult years who turned you on to the prospect of self-employment, you probably discovered the path to entrepreneurship the hard way, like the rest of us. And by the hard way, I mean one of two typical paths. In the first you simply become progressively more miserable and more desperate living with the limited thinking and limited opportunities afforded you in the traditional workplace to the point where you're almost willing to live on the streets just to get the hell out of there. In the second, you gradually realize or had pointed out to you that you just weren't cut out for the traditional workplace or you got the boot when the corporation decided to go in another direction. You know, I think of those two paths as evidence of a goodness of fit problem rather than any sign of failure. Think about it. Being a team player might get you a permanent spot on the employee of the month wall, but if you have any entrepreneurial leanings, it will never lead you to a feeling of deep fulfillment or contribution. And what saddens me most about the whole scenario is the fact that the entrepreneurial folk who are the most resilient, resourceful, and adaptable among us actually do the best job of formatting themselves to whatever environment they find themselves in. Now, this does not mean that the environment actually suits them or brings out their best or allows their highest contribution 
but just that they can tolerate it and the expectations of those who sign their check. But many of the late to the party entrepreneurs I know, including myself, those who did not seek self-employment until their 50s or beyond, have had to work through a lot of regret on the way to maximize their gifts. Some of them have to do some real work, some real mindset work to let go of the idea, I should have done this years ago. Because regret will definitely hold you back. And at this stage of life, you really want to go full speed ahead and waste no time about it. You know, in the modern workplace, being able to conform to the norm is still a highly regarded trait, at least by those in management. But the individuals who actually have the most to contribute are better off by not even attempting such conformity in the first place. And then there are those individuals who couldn't conform no matter how hard they might try. They are simply too original, too unconventional, too eccentric, too socially awkward, or simply too much of an outlier to tolerate the rigidity of the nine to five existence. I adore these individuals, most of whom are neurodiverse because they may fall somewhere on the autism spectrum, have ADHD, dyslexia, OCD, bipolar, depression, anxiety, or some combination of the above. Think about it. Daisies can thrive just about anywhere. But orchids? Orchids require special conditions. And I believe that entrepreneurs, especially neurodiverse ones, are the orchids of the human race. And I also believe that we all lose out on their magnificent contributions when they try too hard to be daisies. Now, whether you discovered that you were always meant to be an entrepreneur, or you simply decided to become one, or had no choice, there is a very different mindset, as well as skill set required to be successful as an entrepreneur. Very different from the one that brought about success as an employee. Now, I'm still not sure I believe that there's such a thing as a entrepreneurial personality type, but there are definitely traits that lend themselves well to self-employment and tend to make working for others very challenging. But even if you are a natural-born entrepreneur, it's very likely that you've picked up some mental and behavioral habits from whatever amount of time you spent being an employee that are now standing in your way. I'm about to share with you my list of what I think are the most common of them in my years working with entrepreneurs, and more importantly, what you should do instead to release the emergency brake and really pick up speed. So I offer you my short list of the things that you should make an effort to unlearn in order to succeed as an entrepreneur. They will be in the show notes because if you're driving or running or baking a cake or anything like that right now where you should not be trying to write things down, find it in the show notes later. For now, just listen and think about how many of these you need to unlearn. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Asking permission, seeking approval, and caring too much about what others will think. It is unnecessary, irrelevant, and will only slow your roll. Comparing your path, your progress, or your performance with anyone else. Thinking you have competitors. You, my dear, have no competition. You do you. Striving for perfection instead of getting it done and improving it as you go. Favoring preparation over action because of unacknowledged fears and insecurities. Ooh, yeah, I'm definitely still working on that one. And here's another one I'm still working on. Excessive self-reliance and refusing to ask for help. Definitely a work in progress. Or how about this? Neglecting your self-care 
because you believe in the hustle mentality. Don't do it. Even if you do succeed, you're going to be exhausted when you cross the finish line and you might even get sick. Or how about this one? Isolating yourself from loved ones and engaging in workaholic tendencies. You will actually get further faster if you set a hard stop at the end of your workday and learn to take time off. Denying your limitations until you crash and burn. You see the theme here? Having non-existent boundaries between work and the rest of life. Or allowing your customers or clients to run and ruin your life. Or how about this one? Not knowing your genuine value and pricing accordingly. Trying to be like everyone else instead of doing what only you do best. Offering the marketplace what you think it needs without first testing the concept to see if it will fly. Or starting the wrong business, you know, the one that's based on your former career, because you don't want to start from scratch. Do you know what, my friend? There's nothing wrong with scratch. Being a beginner could be the very thing you need now. And with all these things to unlearn, there really is just one thing to learn. You want to hear it? Stick with simple, streamlined systems and get fancier and more elaborate if you want as you get bigger and more profitable. You don't need the latest, greatest, newest, sexiest apps and gizmos. That is your ego talking. What they will turn out to be is a massive distraction, masquerading as action taking, necessary, and profitable. They are not. Be a lean, mean, solopreneur machine. You can always add complexity later. But if you burden yourself acting like an employee, then you're not an entrepreneur. You've made a job for yourself, a job with no benefits and nothing but endless hours to look forward to. I know this feels a little heavy, but I see so many of my fellow entrepreneurs, the most bold, brilliant, badass women I know, exhausting themselves because they don't understand that being an entrepreneur isn't just working by yourself and for yourself. It's a different way of looking at work, and we cannot play by the same rules. See you next week. Hey, I hope you're enjoying listening to the Driven Woman podcast and looking forward to each new episode every Tuesday. Are you ready to take our relationship to the next level? Visit my website at dianewingardcoaching.com. I have a weekly blog. There's a quiz you can take to find out what your ADHD signature strength is and some other freebies like the six steps to ADHD mastery or the Driven Woman Roadmap Fast Track to Success. And if you're ready to get serious about going from spinning to winning and taking yourself from driven but distracted to focused, fired up, and flame retardant, you should definitely sign up for a free consultation. We'll spend 30 minutes talking about where you are, where you want to be, and whatever's getting in the way. I won't try to sell you if you're not right for coaching and I'm not the right one for you. But if you are, this might be the best way to make 2021 your best year ever. Want to hear from someone who's actually worked with me? Have a listen to my client, Rachel. I didn't have you helping me along the way to understand a lot of this stuff. The meds would have been a waste for me, a complete and total waste. I would have had a little bit more energy maybe, but still the habits, whatever. There's no magic pill. It's always going to be something I'm going to have to work on. And I am understanding that and being okay with that and just kind of working through that and thinking and being intentional and stopping myself and doing all of the things for the first time in my life. I'm going to tell you right now, the meds have allowed me to slow stuff down enough that I've never been this effective at anything cognitive ever in my life. But I've also never had it explained to me by somebody who understands what's going on in my head either. 
You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.